Welcome to the Catholic Cafe, where Catholic truth is served fresh daily. We've made you a reservation in the luxurious corner booth, so come on in and see what's on the menu today. Now, here's your host, Deacon Jeff Drzezemski. Greetings and welcome to the Catholic Cafe. I'm Deacon Jeff, sitting in the luxurious corner booth of the Catholic Cafe, sitting here with Venerable Tom Dorian. Hello. I say that with, I'm expecting like angelic choirs to sing a high C. Yeah. <laughs> Close. Well, I have a high C that I'm drinking. Yes. I love this show. I don't get this at home. And we have Ziggy Stardust here. <laughs> Ziggy Rodriguez. <laughs> I've been on the show now for five years. <laughs> yes, <That's okay>. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I, 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 uh, as I look at the two of you, it's really cool because I have like this sort of black crescent shape thing burned into my retina. <laughs> I, I Ever since that solar eclipse. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I thought I could do it, but, you know, apparently 10 seconds of the sun stare is not good. <laughs> but I did set the family record. No, no, uh, uh, but I did see the eclipse, which uh, by the time you guys hear this, it's, uh, it was really a cool experience. Yeah. Uh, I, one of the things I love about we the eclipse. We saw like 98%? Yeah, in 99%. Memphis. Was, yeah, but I just, I drove two hours and then right. like 47 hours back. Totality. Totality, and that was kind of cool because we just had to go two hours away. I jetpacked to the moon. Did so you? Like, yeah, and the, then I realized I kind of messed it up because you yeah. can't really see the eclipse. In the same way from the moon. So, so really, that wasn't a solar flare we saw, was it? <laughs> no, that was my jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking off. That is definitely cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, one of the things I love about the whole eclipse ex- experience is like there's so many people uh, in such a divisive world. There's so many people that are all sit and they're, they're focused on one thing. Oh, yeah. They're all, like, looking up to the sky. It was kind of like Pokemon Go brought the world together. For, yeah, for yeah. It's probably better, cooler than that. It, I, I think it's more like, uh, you know, the Feast of the Ascension. You know, yes. and the, you know, the, the angel going, men of Galilee, why are you all looking up? Well, well, <laughs> Your well, Lord will return the same way. Well, in this case, there were a whole lot of people who were, you know, our Protestant brethren have belief in things like the rapture, which is a 19th century idea. And yes. There was a lot of stuff being Chair stirred up. Chair to the gods, baby. Yeah. yeah. There, there was a lot of stuff being stirred up in the time leading up to the eclipse. And uh, now we're in that sort of. That okay. So I have to I have to admit, the weirdest thing I saw driving yeah. uh, in Arkansas was a dude that had something that looked, it was akin to a Ford Pinto. Yeah. And it was it was hand painted. Like spray painted. Please tell me they were Arkansas tags. Uh, you know what? I didn't even pay attention. Or I was so were they busy. Tags at all? And it had these metal rods on top of the thing, and there was like as as big as the car. There was like this fiberglass uh, cloud shaped thing that was also painted that way. And on the on the windows, it said Space Cloud. And there were like four <laughs> four college age kids in there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like I wanted to go. I wanted to get in their car. <laughs> I just had to admit. It was a little weird, but but all that aside, it was a, it was a cool event, yes. uh, and and so uh, we bring ourselves back to the reason we're here, <laughs> which is to do a show that we've we've blown like five minutes already. Uh, That's and, terrible. Yeah, you know, well, you know, so um, it's interesting, and, and this this show idea was we'll give credit where credit is due. Thank Ziggy. you. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, I'm Tom, sorry. Ziggy, one of you guys came with the idea, no, but but uh, you know we have done. How many shows about Lent? How many times do we do we have shows about the season of Lent and entering into this mystical season and this season, this journey? And so like we talk about that. Homilies are are, are you know uh, proclaimed about it. Uh, commentaries, um, all the sh- uh, shows, uh, you know, c- uh, Catholic podcast, whatever. Everybody's talking about the season of Lent. Right. And then we get to Easter. And then it's like we have this big Easter and everyone's all excited. I think everyone's tired yeah. having gone through the Triduum. Mm-hmm. And then we have this octave of Easter. You like know, Every day is a solemnity. Every single day is a solemnity. Uh, and it's just, it's beautiful. And then we're done with that. And then a lot of people go like, well, I guess Easter's over. Right. Because the candy is now like 90%. And that's just the things with coconut in it. That's all that's left. <laughs> right. Nobody wants that. So, so it's like it, it's, it, Easter is over. Uh, and that's what a lot of people think. And the reality is we have this this eight-day, this octave of Easter, right? And then we have an octave of Sundays. Mm-hmm. It's a bigger view, which is like Lent. And it's actually longer than Lent. Yeah. 
right? And so if we think about how we've we've often spent time in our um, Lenten experience trying to get ready and trying to be, pre- prepare ourselves for Easter, we have Easter, and then we, we shorten that, our Easter experience, I'll call it. Yeah. And I think we're doing ourselves short shrift there. I think we really do need to spend find ways in which to make the Easter season unique. Absolutely. Uh, and and like how to view like that those those eight Sundays in totality, um, and not forget about that. I I mentioned before we started, uh, uh, right before we went on air, I, I mentioned that I'd heard this homily one time from a priest. Many years ago, it just stuck with me, and he started. It was it was literally the end of the Easter season. So it's you know we're 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 there celebrating. Uh, what is that feast? There's a big feast. Pentecost. Yeah, Pentecost or Ascension. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh yes, sorry. <laughs> yes. So we're at Pentecost, right? And and he comes up to the ambo and he goes like, "Happy Easter!" And everyone looked at him like he had two heads. <laughs> it just seemed odd, and it's like you know he's right. Yeah. It is the Easter season. It's so important to us that the church has expanded that to eight Sundays, essentially, uh, uh, 50 days, seven weeks, however you want to do all the math. And the reality is there's a lot of Easter to be had. And, And I think one thing that's important for us to remember is that to look at feasting and fasting as is. Uh, two parts of an integrated whole, right? Because, yeah, it's both sides of one coin. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, because it's easy for us to see the, the spiritual value of fasting and the spiritual importance of fasting. And we know that fasting can be very hard and stuff like that. But feasting also requires intentionality and can be something that can bring great grace to a person's life and uh, great spiritual flourishing. And, and you really need both. You need to have that season of fasting so that you can fully embrace the season of feasting. Now, the season of feasting, when we're feasting, it's not, <clears throat> it's not all about you. It's not all about me. It's not all about us uh, indulging. Eat, drink, and be merry, for right. tomorrow we may die. Right? Right, it's it's right. not about that. Yeah. It's about receiving. I mean, so in terms of how it's an inter- two parts of an integrated whole, with fasting, we are dying to ourselves and, and checking our appetites so that we can be prepared to, res- to let go of the things that we don't have and want, et cetera, et cetera. And to, instead, we can uh, receive the good things that God has blessed us with in union with him. And, and so in a way that fe- fasting is a preparation for that feasting where a rightly ordered feasting is in a, you're in receive mode. You're, you're being intentional about receiving in communion with the Lord. You're in a spirit of gratitude, uh, thanking him, acknowledging that it comes from him. You're in a place of communion. You're bringing others uh, to the table with you, right. and, you know, and, and sharing in bonds of love with one another. And, you know, it may not be some super expensive uh, fancy meal. Maybe you can't afford it. I mean, fasting, feasting is going to be different for different people uh, based on their dietary needs, based upon the, uh, their budgetary needs. But it's to say, in this season of feasting, I'm going to look for opportunities, and especially with those that I love. If you, if you, uh, you know, if you're living in a uh, a family life, you know, right. um, I'm going to look for ways to bring the family together to have a time of celebration in union with one another, in union with the Lord, thanking the Lord for all of his many blessings. It's really essentially keying in on celebrating. Yes. Right? And and we should also mention, as you were saying that, I recognize what you're saying about it's it's different for different folks in different situations. Uh, but feasting doesn't always mean food, right? We, yeah. we typically understand that a, a veritable feast Right, but we can we can see things that, and from the perspective of you know a feast for the heart, a feast for uh, for the eyes, a feast for you know just the experience of celebrating, uh, of being with people, and and using the uh, the season of Easter as a time to celebrate and to be positive and to and to have hope, right? Because a lot of times we spend all the other weeks of the year without hope. That's a great point, and it could be something completely and that you wouldn't even normally associate with feasting. You could say, um, hey, you know what? My family and I, we've never gone on a pilgrimage together. I'm going to look on the Internet and see what's available. Oh, Our Lady of Good, Ho- uh, Good Help in Wisconsin is a church-approved apparition in the United States. 
during these eight weeks, we're going to find a time. We're going to make a road trip to Wisconsin. We're going to go visit this shrine of yeah, Our Lady. Yeah, that's a way of feasting because you're prioritizing your time and your resources, and you're bringing the family together. And yeah, it's just one weekend within the stretch of weeks. But you're that's a way of living out Easter and living out the feast because there's a lot that goes into making a trip like that possible. But it's ultimately you're there to honor God and to grow in your devotion to Our Lady, and yeah. so that's a, that's a, there's a lot of different ways you can live out Easter and live out feasting. That's right, and then also uh, in another way, if you think about it in, in terms of the the uh, you know natural law and the seasons, when Easter hits is typically the time that there's like a lot of growth outside. Yeah, you know the flowers are going to be in bloom, and it's an opportunity for you to to relish in God's beauty. Um, and so you can become more prayerful. You can uh, you can be outside working in the garden, you know, during the, during this Easter season, uh, and just thank God for the gift of of life, of the gift of growth, for and let those let that garden work be be prayerful. Uh, and it's just a way to turn uh, and recognize. Well, I like to get out there and get the weeds, you know. Well, if you stop and think about it we have the weeds of our sin that we just have been working uh, and focusing on uh, in self-denial, uh, you know, in self-discipline through Lent. And now we can pluck those weeds. We still have to be conscious of our sin yeah. and the vestiges of sin, but we understand sin from a different perspective, I think, during the season of Easter because we realize that all of the wages of sin, which are death, you know, essentially uh, has been conquered by Jesus. Absolutely, and I think you've hit on a couple of super important points. And first thing, it's my job. It's your job. Yes, <laughs> the first thing is prayer. Well. We prioritizing prayer during Easter is still very important. Uh, and you know, if we're going to celebrate Easter, setting aside time, I think, especially for things like silent meditation, for adoration, being in His presence. You know, like there's that uh, story in the Gospel where Jesus, you know, they criticized our, our Lord and His apostles because they were not fasting at a time that the Pharisees thought fasting was uh, needed. And he said, they're gonna have time to fast, but you, you, when, you're, when the bridegroom is with you, you feast. You know, So Easter is a time, this is the day the Lord has made, this is a time when the bridegroom is with us, but we have to, you know, we have to receive that. So it, first step is prayer. We do have to uh, think about how do we integrate prayer more into our everyday life to have him present, to grow in that personal relationship, but then also, just like you said, to really let him in and let the spirit of, uh, of victory of Christ's resurrection, you know, let the Holy Spirit conquer within us the sin and death within us. Right, let, give, give it to him. Give it to him, well, yeah. we, we talked before, and you had brought up the, this image of, like, having an apartment and having, like, a closet or whatever filled with the, yes. with the, with the junk and the, and the bad stuff and keeping that closed, but really just opening up every room yes. in our house to him. And, and now we can do it confidently, yes. uh, knowing that we are nothing without him, right. that we're broken, and that we, we depend upon him. We rely upon him. And now we can kind of joyfully go like, I get it. You overcame you know, sin and death for me. And so here you can have, you can have all this. Well, and it's an important thing. Like in, we've, talked, we've had previous shows where we've talked about the relationship between sin and death. Um, and, and why Christ, you know, in conquering sin, conquered death, and why in conquering death he conquered sin. But one of the things to really keep in mind is, and this is something to reflect on during Easter, a lot of times it's our fear of death that actually causes us to sin. Like when I say our fear of death, I don't mean just like a bio, fear of a biological reality. You can look at Wisdom 2 and re reflect upon uh, the, the scripture Wisdom 2, but it describes sort of the... the the interior life of the unjust man, where it basically says, you know, we have this core primordial fear that this is all there is, and that uh, one day we're going to die, and that's the end of all existence for us, and eventually our name will be forgotten, and that's it, and it's just this fear of ultimate meaninglessness and personal annihilation. Like the Bible says, like this is, there's a core fear of that within the human person. And so from that place of that core fear, we, we grab for the things of the earth and we say, this is our provision. This is our lot. Like, I'm going to get mine while the getting's good. And that's why we end up being so selfish and, and, and hurting one another. And, and, and so looking at the Easter season, Christ 
in conquering death. Let's let him conquer our fear of death. Let's take a look at places where we still have habitual sin that we need to work on, vices that we need to work on, and fears that we need to work on, and say, am I willing to let our Lord conquer that with it within me? Am I willing to let him conquer that fear? You know, Pope John Paul II said, uh, we're an Easter people. Alleluia is our song. Yeah. You know, and so really living that out during the course of Easter, there is still time for personal inventory as well. But and it's always important for us to do personal inventory and seek personal growth. But within the context of Easter, I think that we can do it with greater hope and greater intimacy with the Lord. And uh, and there could be great fruitfulness that comes from that. Yeah, now we're uh, certainly we're, what we're talking about here is, is uh, living this uh, season of Easter and realizing just why the, the church is so generous in giving us this season that's longer than Lent. Right. Right, that we, that we, that we celebrate. And I, I love this idea, what you're talking about, that um, in terms of like uh, what, you know, our, our St. John Paul II said, we're an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Uh, we, but we have to like, I mean, you can just say that by definition. Right. We're an Easter people, I'll lose their song. Yeah. You know, and the, the thing is, just saying that doesn't necessarily make it right. a reality for people. That you've literally got to choose that. Yeah. Right? So you, you, you actually have to say, like, you know what? I'm going to accept that. Mm-hmm. Because the, the Lord is not going to invade your heart. Right. He's not going to take your heart. You have to give him your heart. Right. right? He's given it to you. Uh, and for you to tend, and he always respects you and your your uh, personal autonomy, essentially, to decide yes or no. I mean, that's the, that's the free will choice of love. Mm-hmm. You have to freely choose him. He's not going to just like put himself on you, and you have no choice but to love him. Right. And that wouldn't be love. Right. If you don't have the opportunity to choose something else, and you have to choose of your own free will. Right, and, and and we talk about that when we talk about marriage and and how that works and and what all that looks like. And the thing is, in this season especially, so for these eight Sundays, for these um, uh, fifty days, where we just we choose to have hope. And I know that uh, some people can get a little um, down about a lot of things in, in the world that we live in. But this is really a time where we need to say, like, you know what? All the differences, all the things that going back to the eclipse, all the things that separate us, let's all just focus on the one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I have to admit, there's a part of me that kind of wanted there to be some kind of spaceship that came out on the other side of the moon or something. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, I really wanted the Lord to come that day. (laughs) You know, Uh, I wanted to have my 100% beeswax candle there and (laughs) see, I'm ready, Lord, I'm ready. And the thing is, I, I, I really also think that this eclipse was an opportunity for all of us to sort of like to unite in a way yeah, uh, and, and to realize our brotherhood. I, I mean, I made friends that I didn't have before when I popped my little 10 by 10 canopy up and for like two and a half hours or three hours in a little park in Walnut Ridge, Arkansas. Yeah. Right. It's funny. I had my granddaughter with me, Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte. So I had Charlotte <laughs> with me. She was there. And then we're sitting there, we're all set up with our little chairs just waiting about two hours, and she looks over, and I don't remember the girl's name, and just shouts this girl's name at the top of her lungs. We'll just say it's Ruby. Ruby! Ruby! And I'm like, what are you doing? Charlotte, calm down. Ruby, Ruby. And it was a friend from school. Oh, uh, wow. From, from Memphis that, was, that had come to the same park and was literally just a few feet away. That's awesome. And, and it's like, and you stop and think about it. It's a small world. Yeah. You know, and then we're all looking at the same thing and we're all united. And again, these are choices that we make. We can look at all the division in the world or we can choose to unite with other people in the world in a, in a common mission and a common goal. And what I loved about the concept of the eclipse and Easter was that we were all focused on the sun, you know, and then also being like, you know, come across and, and there's the moon in front. And so these two celestial bodies perfectly aligned. Yeah. And you sit there and think about like the the the, the spiritual celestial nature of things. Mm-hmm. And you think about like uh, why 
Mary, uh, you know, in all the classical images, has the moon under her feet, mm-hmm. right? Where does the moon get its light? From the sun. Right. So Mary gets her light from her sun. So she's not an entity that we worship. We don't worship Mary, right? We right. don't. So theologically and, and all of this, we start to realize that the way nature works. So we're all fixated on the Son of God and his mother, just for these few minutes. Now, I know a lot of people weren't thinking that way. Right. And the guys driving the space cloud car were not thinking that way. <laughs> but but whether they thought that way or not, that's what they were doing. Mm. And to me, it's like this is just one of the ways in which God speaks to our, our hearts in a way that if we give ourselves over to that, in other words, if we choose hope, if we choose to live the hope of the resurrection, it, it changes our own lives for the better but also, it, it's viral. It changes everybody around me. It changes my environment. People start to go like, why is he so happy? I want that happiness. You know, he's, he's ugly and he's poor. Why, why is he happy? It's like, well, Deacon Jeff is happy because, right, he believes in Jesus Christ, who has overcome death for our sake, gave himself up, suffered, died, was buried, and then rose again. Right. And ascended into heaven victoriously. And it's like... Okay, that's why he's happy. Well, I want some of that. And, you know, I, there could be people in Radio Land who are dealing with some really tough stuff right now. I mean, suffering is a part of life. Could be that during the course of this Easter season, uh, any one of us could, could deal with some catastrophically bad yeah. uh, sufferings and issues. But the hope here is that if we're living out our Easter, that we can, we're going to be a little bit more predisposed to receive that st- the, those those sufferings, including the catastrophic ones, by God's grace, to recognize the good, you know, to, to grow in our capacity to trust in the goodness of God's yeah. permissive will, and and to have hope that every cross is followed by a resurrection. That yes, the sufferings that come our way, they are real and they are a cross, but. As we share in the cross, we are also going to be able to share in that resurrection. And it's not always obvious what that resurrection is going to look like. But if, but this is a time during Easter where we can pray for the faith to grow in that trust that that resurrection will come. And by that, we can really kind uh, we can come to also rest in him. Because I think rest is also an important yeah. part of Easter. Relax. Yes. Lay back. Enjoy. Yes. Right? Um, it doesn't mean cast all your worries aside. It doesn't mean uh, no having no responsibilities for 50 days. It doesn't mean that. Right. But it does mean that, you know, you, you deserve a break today. Right? Well, well, every Sunday is a mini Easter. And so basically every day during the Easter season, in a way, can be a mini Easter. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and so to that effect, a day of rest... Uh, taking time to rest and giving more time to quality time with the Lord in prayer and in love and in union with him. It'll help us to grow in love for ourselves, authentic love for ourselves and one another and communion with one another and receiving the goods, things that God has blessed us with and more fuller union with him and with gratitude and with hope. And that's ultimately what Easter is about. You know, when I've done reflections um, a couple of times as part of uh, presentations or retreats, on uh, the mysteries of the rosary when when you talk about the resurrection um you can talk about the resurrection and you can talk about like well you know jesus rose from the dead that's incredibly cool and he's like so it's like of course he can he's god he can do that and the thing is what's important about it is when we're praying that uh that decade um of the the, those of that, that mystery of the resurrection it's not so much that Jesus resurrected from the dead that we're like basically standing there applauding. Yay, Jesus, you right. did it. You, well, I knew you could do it. You know, it's not that. It's like it's, you want to have faith in that. You want to have faith in what Jesus did. And in Easter season, we realize that more profoundly. And that, that the, this mystery of the resurrection is something that you can, you can put stock in that and go like, I'm going to believe in the God who can resurrect from the dead. Mm-hmm. Right. Because when I need something that seems like it's killing me, something that's really weighing me down to the then I want to believe in that. I want to believe in that resurrection. I want to believe in what Jesus did, because if Jesus can if he can resurrect from the dead, he can do anything in my life. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's the thing that we need to focus on. So that's what we need to have. 
50 days of that. Yeah. 50 days of resurrection. And and that uh, is an incredible opportunity for all of us. And and even though as we get closer to the end of the season, we get closer to Pentecost, you're going to see, like, you're going to watch those Easter flowers start to dwindle, right? <laughs> the Easter lilies, we're all taking bets on, like, well, I don't know if that one's going to make it another week. You know, yeah. they're starting to get a little brown around the edges. You get a little close up there. And I mean, it, the, the, the church ladies are up there watering every, you know, they're spending some time up there trying to make, trying to prune all the stuff and make it look as nice. And it may just be down to one Boston fern at the end, <laughs> right? There's just one fern left, and that's really all we got left up there on the altar after, uh, after eight, eight Sundays of Easter. But the thing is, we always have, those are just um, a sign of spring. They're not, they're, they're going to die. Those flowers are going to die. But Jesus didn't. Uh, stay dead and that's why and so in our death to be resurrected to have hope in the resurrection of Easter to be drawn into the season to allow this season to overcome us Mm -hmm. in a way uh, that this becomes the focus of who we are uh, you know that we are um, uh, a resurrection people and that hallelujah is our song that we live that uh, purposefully Right? Don't allow ourselves to, to fall into the trap because, trust me, the devil's going to be looking at ways to trip you up. He hates this season. Yeah. I wonder if the devil went on vacation if he'd go on vacation during Easter season. <laughs> it's like, it's no good. There's nothing I can do. You know, I'll get them later. But I still think the devil's going to be active in trying to pluck people you know, from the Lord and, and out, of that, uh, out of that vineyard uh, and, and essentially just to, uh, to ruin things, right? To try to ruin things. But he can't because we're a resurrection people. And hallelujah is our song. And, and Jesus is here for us and he rose from the dead. Let's believe that. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the, the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to The Catholic Cafe. If you'd like to contact Deacon Jeff, send him an email at deaconjeff at thecatholiccafe.com. Visit us on the web at thecatholiccafe.com. You can also find us on iTunes or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The Catholic Cafe is brought to you by the Order of Malta Federal Association. Join us again at The Catholic Cafe, serving up salvation one cup of coffee at a time.